Hey, you folks, Quilly King here, and welcome to Let's Play Imperator Rome Settled Tribe. So what am I talking about here? Well, this is a very, very, very early pre-release preview of the game. Myself and five other YouTubers are going to be showcasing different government types throughout the world of Imperator Rome. And I am playing as a settled tribe. And in particular, I am going to be uh, playing a settled tribe in the lovely area over here, which can form Belgia, my favorite kingdom. So we're going to go ahead and jump in as Monopia here. They're on the coast, which is kind of nice. They're also one of the larger, one of the nations in this area here. It's got, we've got a total population of 59 uh, Druidic Belga here, as opposed to eh, similar numbers. There might be better leaders. Our leader actually has really, really, really crummy charisma, which is unfortunate. Um, he's good on religious, but that's about it. So it, it's not it's not the greatest, but I think we'll, we'll be okay. Let's go ahead and punch ourselves in here as Monopia and see what we can do. So here is our lovely nation. We are in the default vision mode of the terrain map mode over here, um, which if you zoom out, we get nice countries. If we zoom in, we can actually see the terrain nicely and these borders over here. You can also switch simple terrain mode if you really want to be able to see what's going on over here. Political map mode, this is your standard sort of Europa Universalis country view that most people probably spend most of their game in like that. Zoomed out, I think the political map mode and terrain map mode, oh no, they are, they are different. Ah, subtly. But there we go. Culture map modes. So we can see a lot of Belga people over here. And I guess being green here, we're in a similar sort of group. Culture group Gallic. There we go. Uh, not to be confused with the Onion culture group. we got the Druidic religion going on here. Provinces. We'll talk about a little bit of this uh, in a bit. I will be spending a lot of time in the diplomacy map mode to keep track of who my friends are. Uh, partially because I think because, you know, these are not anywhere close to modern country names, I have a hard time remembering who my various neighbors are and whatnot. If you haven't seen anything about Imperial Rome, I'm going to try to go through a little um, intro very, very quickly here. We are limited for this uh, particular um, video series to a total of 120 minutes of gameplay. So uh, I, I, I don't want to waste too much time, but let's see what we can do. The world of Imperator Rome is divided a little differently than in the terminology you would see in other Paradox Grand Strategy games. Um, this large highlighted area here, this is a province. And the individual little subsections here are referred to as cities. So this is the city here of Burgas in the province of Marinia. And um, in... Uh, Belgica is... I guess the larger area, the zone, the region, as opposed to the province, something like that, I believe. Anyway, so that's the way the game sort of gets subdivided. In terms of gameplay style, it's of the Paradox games, I would say it's most similar to Europa Universalis. However, it borrows extensively from uh, certain aspects of Crusader Kings, for example, where we've got huge amounts of different characters involved and relationships between them. There's also some elements from Victoria in terms of how the population is represented by these pop groups, which have a culture and a religion, as well as individual happiness because of various things. There's also some trade good stuff going on. So we are are the nation of Monopia, and our current leader is Tychomaris of the Erosis family. So if we go to the characters over here, we can actually group things by family. So there's our family over here, for example, and this is the character currently leading our country. Now, unlike Crusader Kings, we do not play representing a, a, um, a family. Uh, we really do play as a nation, so a little bit more Europe over there. But keeping track of who your characters are and what their various traits are is very important. We've got some various things we can go over here. We're married, we've got a kid, that's good to know. Different families will have different requirements. So our government type over here, we are a settled tribe. So they're as opposed to a migratory tribe. So for example, Frisia over here is a migratory tribe, so they can move around a fair bit. We are settled, we're a little bit more centralized, a little bit more organized, a little bit more, dare I say, civilized. I mean, don't get me wrong. We ain't no Rome, but you know, we'll, we'll try to do things a little bit better here. We will have a hard time taking up because we're low civilization level and general shortage of um, citizen pops. So you can have four different types of population in your cities. You have slaves, tribesmen, freemen, and citizens. Citizens are the ones who do research for you. And we have very few. We actually have a nice little warning over here that, by the way, we have a really terrible research ratio. Um, because it really does come down. Where do we see? There's somewhere where we can see our count of population. There we go. Of our 59 pops, we have very few of them. I think two um, that are citizens, so that ratio is quite poor in terms of de developing uh, science. And it's one of the ways of scaling things, because if you have a large nation with massive population base, you still need a significant percentage of them to be citizens to be able to protect them appropriately. 
Anyway, um, we can pick a couple of different ideas over here, and if we have this slot have a military idea and this slot have an oratory idea, then we'll activate our country bonus over here. So we're going to want to do that. So I'm going to do that first. I'm going to take a military idea. Um, this costs oratory points to go and implement, but I want to do this immediately for sure. So there's a number of them. Many of them are locked. The ones we have unlocked are Ordered Retreat, which gives us a boost to reinforcement speed and Army Morale Recovery. Army Morale Recovery, I think, is going to be a very high value pick in Imperator, actually, because at a glance, it looks like re Morale Recovers very slowly compared to other Paradox games, which is interesting. There's permanent shipyards over here, which makes Triremes cost less if we want to do more boat stuff, like if we want to go into a Brittany over here, or Britain, I should say, Brittany is over here. Um, we could consider that. And then uh, over here, we've got Martial Ethos, Morale of enemy or of armies 10% higher. I think we're gonna grab that. That sounds really potent to me. We have to grab an oratory idea if we want to activate the whole combo as well. So that's over here. We can have sanctioned privileges, decreased monthly corruption. I'm hoping this is for all characters in the realm, and I think it is. And that actually is really good to keep corruption low. We've got military administration, which keeps our general and admiral loyalty higher. That is really nice. Hospitium over here, improve ma opinion maximum, increased by 33%. Also quite strong if you want to play a diplomatic game. I think what we're going to do is we're going to go for our loyalty on our generals, and that's going to be quite nice. Taking a look at the rest of this government screen over here, we can see our provinces. So we have four provinces currently. We have Frisia, Morinia, Nervia, and Iburonia. Iburonia, I guess, yeah. Um, what's interesting about this is we don't own the entirety of these provinces. So Nervia over here, we actually only own a single city in Nervia. This is right over here. Uh, Nervia is actually split between the nation of Iberonia as well as the nation of Nervia. And you can see there's a bit of a overlap here with Iberonia as well. So uh, we don't have full dominance over these various uh, provinces quite yet. We can see our population breakdown. Um, but we're all we're all Belga, we're all Druidic, and then we've got a breakdown of the actual pops. Over on the government screen over here, we can see our various uh, counselors. We can also see the clan chiefs that are responsible here in Manapia, um, because we have ourselves. We are one of the clan chiefs, but we also have Dubnovelan. Listen, we'll call him we'll call him Dubstep over here. We've got Dubstep, and we've got uh, Coilus here. So they're seventy five percent loyal to me. Of course, I'm hundred percent loyal to myself. That's fine. Here's our centralization level. We can also change some of our laws if we want to spend a bunch of oratory points. We're not going to do that right now, but it's good to know that it's an option. We'll spend military power later on to unlock some military traditions, technology as well. We actually can unlock it now. We have uh, some civic power, so we can do a little bit of that. Let's hold off for a second. I might want to spend my civic power on something else. Uh, religion, we do have enough religious power to kick something off here. You can also spend religious power to increase stability. We're good. Discipline's really nice, manpower's really nice, research point's nice, tax money nice, everything's really good. I think the first thing I'm going to do is I will grab the population growth increase. I would like to get a little bit more population in my nation. Uh, see if we can kick that off. Uh, diplomacy, we'll look at that in a scooch. Decision screen, I actually couldn't show this when I went to the first Rome preview event, but now the decision screen has been done. We're particularly interested in this one. Unite Belgia, you can see it, um, it's very nice and it highlights the map everything so we need to control all this to create to form belgia uh we could also do galatia and for this one it's a little bit different why is it not highlighting it's highlighting a second ago is it somewhere else in the world where's galatia it might just be somewhere else I'm not looking, because you can see, if I highlight Gaul, you can see all the cities I have to control to form Gaul, which is quite a bigger goal. So, Belgia is pretty much the quickest thing we can do, so we might definitely consider doing something like that. If our uh, civilization and whatever gets a little bit higher, we can go and do things like embracing democracy. You can see here, uh, we need a civilization level above 50, and we need to have enacted increased council powers law, so we'll see about that. Okay. So I guess we will go and spend some on inventions. So inventions are permanent boosts for your nation. Um, I mean, you'll, you'll only be able to grab a limited number of them over the course of the game. Um, but the decisions you make now will really be around forever. So there's some really potent different um, options. You know, starting experience is not bad. Military tech investment, so we would tech up in military a little faster. That's nice. Commerce income, tax income. Money's always really strong. Tribes and output over here. More improved maximum. Again, if you really want to play a diplomatic game, I think I'm probably going to grab aggressive protection to make fabricating of claims a lot cheaper. Um, normally, it's 200 oratory power to fabricate a claim. So this will still be 180. That's still a lot of points. But in the, over the course of the game, we'll be able to fabricate a lot of claims a lot cheaper. I think it's worth doing. Probably. Sure. 
we're effectively we're trading a hundred of this to save 20 of this every time we want to fabricate a claim in my experience oratory power feels like it's a little harder to come by it may be partially because my tribal chief has no um no charisma at all so he's really bad at generating oratory power so that might be why i'm a little bit biased over here i do like the plus one ripple wrap that's really nice um really helpful more omen power is really good army morale recovery talked about how the army morale and there's more tech speed as well I talked about how army morale really builds up quite slowly in this game i think there's a lot of value here and we're definitely going to want to do some early wars i'll almost certainly be grabbing things like herbalism and maybe uh, military artisans over here to improve our tax rate but right now our tech rate is so bad that even increasing it by like 5%, 5% of nothing is basically nothing. Or I should say 5% of basically nothing is still basically nothing. We've got a note here. We've got unused trade routes in the capital. We can actually see that at a glance in the uh, nation overview here. Here's the trades out we can have in our provinces. Um, so by default, your provinces have zero and your capital always has one. In addition to that, you can run a policy here to have more trade routes. But what are we running over here? Um, I can choose a different policy. This would give me tyranny and cost me points. This would cost me points. It wouldn't be tyranny because these are my own uh, my own area. And over here we've got happiness but less population growth. I guess I don't want to spend oratory power making any changes for this right now, but we'll see. Anyway, let's get the trade routes going on. So in Marinia, we've got two trade routes available. Now, it would be really nice if we could grab iron so we could start producing heavy infantry. Uh, we haven't taken a look at the trade, or that's trade route map mode. What I would like is a trade good map mode, which must exist. Trade goods map mode. Oh, wow. Okay, that's... Um, there are a lot of different trade goods in this game, you guys. Whew. Uh, wine, hemp, fish, fur. So I don't know where we would get, you know, iron from. I, in my experience, something will tend to open up not too distant in the future. As we develop either better relationships or maybe we reach a little further or something, we should get access to iron. Getting horses would be really good. Getting elephants would be fantastic if we could. Um because that becomes like a powerhouse unit early on because right now we can't make very fancy units we can only make uh javelin hurlers chariots and skirmishers and that's it and we would certainly like having some fancier stuff although that's also very expensive i guess for now what i'm going to do is i will import oh i can't import anything right now let me unpause the game i think it'll uh reshuffle some of the relationships and then take a look at the trade routes all right, we'll, we'll, we'll give it a second here. In terms of my neighbors, I will certainly want to go and conquer some. Now, I'm tempted to start an OCB war. I can't right now. can't start a war until November, the 1st of November. Um, so, okay, in preparation for some warring, let's go and make some troops. I'm going to make a new unit here that's three skirmishers and three javelin hurlers. Um, and I still have a fair amount of... Um, fair amount of manpower. Let's get a quad cherry unit, and then we'll see about that. Okay, so spend some manpower. That's going to be fine. Um, yeah, we'll want some allies and things. We'll also want to take care or take out some of our neighbors. This guy's small. Um, maybe what I'll do... You've already got a defensive alliance going on, so we're probably not going to want to declare war on you. So how do I join your defensive alliance? I don't know if you have to invite me. Oh, join defensively. Oh, uh, they don't lead it. I'd have to ask uh, Kaletia instead. Okay, well, actually, let's let's hold off on the defensive league. I just want an alliance with you, because you can join me in the offensive war. So we're going to go over to the diplomacy map mode over here. And we could get more of our neighbors, but we could also ask people who aren't our neighbors, because we're not likely to declare war against them so much. Like, what about these guys here, for example? There we go. So we've got a total of four relationship slots. We might wait a scooch before we do any more of this. Um, there we go. Uh, oh, wait, that's these guys. They want to form a defensive league with me, this little guy. Oops, I meant to decline, so that was a misclick. Um, leave defensive league. Uh, lack of commanders for one of our U units. Yes, indeed. So, you've got eight martial skill. That's pretty good. You're fairly loyal, so that's going to be fine. What's interesting is these two armies that I already had, these are armies actually being led by the other clans. So, their troops are fully loyal to this commander directly, and I can't, I don't really have, I mean, I can control them right now because the commander itself is loyal to me, um, but I can't really reorganize this, and if this guy becomes this loyal, then this army will just do whatever the heck he wants all the time. Uh, still no trade routes available. I'm somewhat surprised. 
What's the other place that's got a trade route? Right here. You got nothing either. Alright, we'll see what shakes up. Um, you, do you have any allies? Not yet. I think we're going to do an OCB war against this guy. And we'll call in one of our allies. Oh, diplomat on route. Well, we can ask him after. Conflicting interests. That's fine. Boom. We're just going to start a war. We do lose stability because it's a no CB declaration. So if you're new to these games, CB, that's that's Casus Belli. So it's it's, um, it's Latin, which is very appropriate given the game we're playing here. Is a cause for war. And we didn't have a good reason to go to war here. So our people are a little like, really? Oh, you have no morale right now. Yeah, I was going to say, battle is likely going to be higher. They didn't have any morale kicking in. We did. I don't know why they were so low. These guys are still being built up, but this is going to be very nice. There we go. Call... Um, call to arms. We're gonna do that for sure right away. Breaking alliances. Marinia is not interested in joining our war, apparently. Um, still, that's okay. Still a little trade route. I don't know what's going on there. I've never seen that before. Right, so we're gonna jump on here. That's our first army. Victorious. Yeah. See, they have they have no morale. One of the things we may want to adjust is our tactic that we're using. So there are a number of different tactics they can use, and depending on what kind of troops you have, some troops are better than, than others. For example, right here, given the fact that we've got light infantry and uh, archers, we're very good at doing either skirmishing and a little bit less good at bottleneck. We'll take skirmishing over here. Um, it does matter, like, who you're fighting against. So different tactics do better against different other tactics. But still, we'll just go ahead and take skirmishing right over here because our archers and our other guys are going to be best at this. This is going to be another skirmishing army here. And this one here, uh, which is going to be all chariots, we're going to go ahead and use deception. Now, I don't know how it'll work if everyone jumps in to the same battle, but overall this is going to be okay. Um, I'm going to move you up to here to start sieging that. Um, you're going to keep moving down here. Uh, they do have a fort over here, so we'll have one longer siege, but that's it. And I think forts auto-grab things that are adjacent, which is why we lost that one here. But that's okay. That's not going to matter at all. Oh, you need a commander, so we'll give you Camarcus over here. Uh, he's a seven. A seven's still pretty good. Still pretty good. All right. I think this is a pretty good start to our little run here. Bum, 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 bum. Yeah, you're still limping away. That's great. Um, I think I'm going to get you moving in this direction, and you as well are going to move over here. here. Still need the trade routes. We can call you in. Well, that was the guy who may have been breaking our alliance. Yeah, here, let's just do this. We'll have fought a war together. It's going to be great. And I'm worried these guys are going to ally with someone else, and then all of a sudden um, I'm going to be kind of stuck. But I think this is a pretty good start. I'm happy I did a no CB war declaration. We will have to go and do some sacrifice to the gods to get our stability back up. Um, can I stop you? Yeah. Is that I'm gonna lose that one? Which seems a little odd, but. There you go. We'll just be ready to move in as a group. What I don't want to do is merge these armies up, and the reason I don't want to do that is because. Uh, well, first of all, the guys who belong to a specific clan won't merge up anyway, but I don't want to make any one general too powerful. Uh, we'll move you here and get ready to merge up with the other uh, chariots. That's the thing I did when I was playing the initial presentation really early on. I was playing as Rome. I grouped, you know, I did the, the Europa thing or the CK2 thing where I grouped all my units in one giant stack. And after a number of successful battles, the general became very popular. All the troops became loyal to him. And civil war. And that's when I knew it was like, oh, this is going to be a pretty fun game. Let me go and pull the chariot group out of here. Too much attrition as is. We'll probably trim it down a little bit too much, but I'm a little worried about this 14k stack sitting over here. So we're just going to have our chariots sitting idle next by, or next to the place. There we go, now we can do some trade. Okay, let's take a little look-see. We can import iron if we want to make warriors. So heavy infantry types. So this would just unlock heavy infantry, which is really powerful. They're very expensive, but they're very powerful. The other thing that's always nice is importing a bunch of grain for population growth. Certainly. I'm going to import an iron. Actually, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to import grain. My two trade routes over here. And I have to import them from a particular friend. Oh, uh, we will come back to you, I guess. Um, the other trade route? Right here. Okay, we'll have to wait a little bit more, I guess. Um... Because if you get a surplus of something in your capital province, then it gives a benefit to your entire nation. So I want um, 
with, and the benefit for having a surplus of grain is more manpower. So I'm going to want to enable that. And as long as some province somewhere has the iron, then I'll be able to produce those. So that's going to be okay. So we'll just wait for some of this to shake itself out, and we're going to be fine. Whoever I'm importing from, oh, it's way over here. It's going to highlight on purple. That's why I really, really like the diplomacy map mode. I realize it's not... It's not gorgeous necessarily, but especially at war like this, it makes everything really clear what's going on. So we're just going to siege out this fort and chill out over here. I guess we can say, uh, here, you guys are allowed to attach over here. That's going to be fine. So these guys will probably all come and chill with me. And we can go and attack out here. You can also automate your troops quite a bit by giving them an objective over here, which is kind of really nice. Uh, you're not locked. I'm waiting for you to lock. And we're going to jump on your face. Oh, no, you changed your mind. Bum, bum, bum. Starving pops. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A little bit of light on the trade. Uh, you don't want to engage those guys, buddy. Change your mind. Yeah, there you go. You can just de-siege that. That's okay. So as soon as we're done sieging out this fortress, we'll make a move. Actually, we might just be able to peace out at that point. Um, our war goal, technically, because of our war declaration, is um, supremacy, so we have to win some, uh, more battles to be able to get like the ticking war score. But I'm still going to want to take this, just because that way, when we peace out, I'll be able to ask for all this land. We're just going to try to swallow up this entire nation. Um, it's got it's got partially the province of Nervia and partially the province of Euboronia, which are two provinces that I already have a partial presence on. So this is just going to help us gain more control over that. Lose a bunch of money, gain religious power. Lose tons of loyalty. I guess I will do this. I mean, we're hurting a bit for money. Luckily, this... Uh, actually, no, it is not going to give me enough religious power to increase our stability. Which is too bad. I'm not going to do that. But yeah, our tax situation is mostly army maintenance. So I'm happy I ha I'm not building warriors yet because they're very expensive. over here causing issues? It might be. Anyway, I'll move you up here. We'll be ready to desiege this stuff. I could also, actually, it would probably be a good idea. I'm going to go and tell you to be on defend borders. But what you're going to do is you're automatically going around and try to desiege stuff when it's safe. There you go. Siege is won. Now things are going to move a little bit better. Can I jump on you? No. Wait until you lock. Oh, there we go. There's already going to be some stuff over here. And you're moving this direction. I'm going to make sure that you're exposed to this direction. might win. There's going to be a lot of numbers. We're going to have reinforcements coming in, though. Yeah, some of them are moving out, so this is going to be very good. There we go. Yeah, we're just smashing them. Excellent. Okay. We are victorious! Catch these guys. We'll throw you over here. Uh, some trade offers. Yeah, we'll go ahead and trade out things that we have in excess of for some extra money. Any chance we can sue for peace and just swallow you all up? Um, so these are by cities, these are by states. Oh, I need to occupy the capital before I can ask for this one. It's the capital over here, so we're going to have to go and take that. But it's not a fort, so it'll just go through very quickly, and then we'll be able to peace out. Looks like we're going to smash these guys. Done. And then a quick little siege over there. Um, let me deselect you. The rest of you, I'm going to go and tell you to defend orders. So you'll go and desiege some stuff. And mostly get out of here so you're not getting attrition to death, which is what I'm looking for. We'll deal with the trade routes again once we peace out. That's starving pops, mostly in these places that are being besieged here. But yeah, I like this automated army. I like its separate category and everything. They're going to go around and desiege some stuff for me. You know the stuff that in, like, EU and CK can be very tedious to manage? That's what this is awesome about. I wouldn't necessarily trust this behavior. Um, yeah, that's fine. To, you know fight the bulk of the combat for me, but this sort of mop-up job? Oh, glorious. So happy. Okay, so we have full occupation over here. Let's go ahead. Sue for peace. We're going to take both your provinces. Excellent. And any money you had kicking around. Good. So we're going to get a lot of aggressive expansion over here. Aggressive expansion works quite differently in this game um, than in others. It's actually shockingly maybe more of an internal issue than an external one. If you have pops of different culture and religion and stuff and you have a lot of aggressive expansion, your people, well, you know, your your, your sort of adopted people are gonna get cranky. But there you go, we're gonna go ahead and uh, just eat this all up. Ah, what do we do with the Euborian elite that we have captured here? Well, deserve no quarter. Every character in Euboronia would be put to death before the cheering crowd 
of them. I would gain popularity. I've currently got a popularity of 43. This would give me five more popularity. The other thing is um, that there's likely a bunch of characters that we have gone and sort of taken from here who might not be loyal to me. We could banish those of class, put the rest of the sword. We would lose some aggressive expansion, imprison their leaders, then we could do stuff to them when they're in prison. We'd lose popularity, though. We could choose to pass judgment on the important families. I'm going to say the enemies deserve no quarter. I like the idea of popularity and getting rid of people who might be kind of cranky pants. Um, so there's no more sieging going on. So I'll just set everyone to, like, here. Everyone be on defend borders operation. That's going to be A-OK. -okay. So we might want to take a breath before we start another war. <laughs> I know. So... so <coughs> Excuse me, such a crazy concept. Let's do a sacrifice to the gods. Increase our stability up here. Excellent. That's going to help because we had some unrest going on. There's still some over there. Um, if we take a look over here, we're still 100% Belga. We got 95 people now. Nice. 100% Druidic. That's good. And yeah, we haven't gotten any new provinces. Now, Nervia over here is very disloyal. They're very disloyal. And in fact, dropping. Um, and that's because individual cities are disloyal. Right, so we're getting... The big one is from Confluenta over here. They're super disloyal. Um, right now, okay, the individual people are... Oh, these guys are really unhappy. Ruler and popularity. Boy, yeah, they're really kind of cranky. How about the citizens? They're slightly better. But still not great. Now, they might bounce back. There's ways for us to make people happy. There's buildings we can build and various things like that if we had money. Um, let's take a look at the trade route situation here. Uh, hemp for slave output. Slaves do produce good money. We may have captured some slaves during the war as well. Um, vegetable, higher supply limit, cheaper moving slaves. We could just get fish for some population growth. Wood so we can build trireme, but I don't think I'm really looking to go overseas. I guess I'll just get some fish for now. Uh, from, uh, from whoever. Oh, this would be an internal trade route. So this is from one of my provinces to another province. So this one... This actually won't cost me when I'll actually make me money. So that sounds pretty good. And then, again, uh, trade route in Nervia is available. Can I do more internal fish from Frisia? I guess I had lots of extra fish going around. Okay. Done, done, done. Well, listen, folks, this is a good place to put in a cut. Um, I still don't know exactly how we're going to structure things for our 120 minutes of gameplay, but it does seem like a really good place to put in a cut. Let me wrap this up very quickly. If you're new to the channel, do make sure to subscribe and hit the bell if you want to, to make sure you get the, the notifications about new videos going online. Um, thank you very much for watching. Thanks for the comments and the likes and all those things. Always really appreciated. Really, really helpful. And I'll see you guys next time.